Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today I want to talk about how I got my first freelance job and how you can get yours as well, or at least give you a few tips, a few things that worked for me and might work for you as well. The first thing I want to talk about is how I got into this. So when I was 16 or 17, back in 2015, um, I was working with PHP, I, I had some little side projects. I had already worked a little bit with it in the past uh, using some discussion board platforms such as Envision Power Board, PHPB, but I didn't really know what I was doing. It usually had its own te template syntax, so I wasn't dealing with PHP actually. But anyway, uh, in 2015 I started doing some things with it, getting some experience. And uh, I wanted to get a few jobs with it. I tried applying to some local jobs and I had no success. I had no, no portfolio, nothing. So I decided to make a little website that was, um, it was intended to be used by uh, concerned people. So you, you had a map and you could submit some complaints to your city. For instance, uh, on my city, we had some, some signs uh, written very poorly. Um, wrong words, that kind of stuff. So you could take a picture with your phone, go to the website and say, hey, uh, this is my complaint. So you would um, tag the location, a uh, little description and upload the image. And then you could see on a map all the complaints available. Um, we had a few categories um, and that's it. You had a map, you had some locations and you could click and see what was the issue on that place. And I used that as my my project on my portfolio. That was the only project I had. And I, I applied to some local jobs, but I didn't manage to get anything. And then I live in Brazil, by the way. I was living in Brazil back then. Um, I decided to apply to a few jobs on Europe and the US. And uh, I just didn't have enough experience. I was uh, a beginner by all means. And I decided to go to Fiverr.com, which is a website where you can sell stuff for $5, but it's usually not $5. You have a few upgrades. And I posted something like, I will create a landing page for you, something like that. And some guy approached me um, and he said, hey, um, I need to make an app. Can you make an app? <laughs> and I totally didn't know how to make an app. And I said, yeah, sure I can do but not for five dollars and then he gave me his email and we chatted a bit and uh, we ended up at I think he paid me 600 euros or something and I didn't know how to, to code an app I used Cordova PhoneGap so it wasn't a native app but I was just learning as, as I go so I didn't know how to make an app I was and my battery camera died so and it's really hard right here because of the softbox but anyway i didn't know how to make an app i had no idea so i was just doing as i went as I go um he already had a backend he already had a website so i was just connecting the pieces in the end the app was very bad it worked but the code was terrible but it worked and yeah so i got a client and I finished the project and I didn't know where to go after this. At this point, I already had one project, was two projects, what was a really good thing. And my portfolio was expanded. And the first thing I want to comment here is that you should never burn bridges with clients. Um, this first client, we, we stayed in touch, we kept in touch. So um, a few months later, he came back to me with another job, but um, let's, let's, Wait a little bit to get into that part. So now I had two projects in my portfolio. What I did is I started a blog, and as I got more as I got more experience, um, I started to record screencasts as well. And I already had two projects in my portfolio, so I started applying for jobs. And having those projects on my portfolio, plus the blog, plus the screencasts, gives you. Uh, much more authority. So when I went to someone and say, hey, I know this technology, uh, I could be a good fit into your team. He can check my blog, he can check my tube page, and he can say, hey, he, he really does know those things. And that puts you really uh, ahead of the competition. 
So that's my first tip. Have a blog and have some projects. If you don't have clients yet, just do something for yourself. Do a little fun side project, anything works. You just have to, you just need to have something to show to your clients. Um, sometimes it will work when you say, hey, I can do this, but usually it won't. You, you need to have something to show them. And that's tip number one. Tip number two would be have a blog. A blog is really good to document your findings and a really good way to blog if you don't know what to blog about is blog about what you've been learning. So you just learned how to uh, reduce your code using MapReduce, something like that. And I don't mean MapReduce the, the tool. I mean, um, let's say you you were writing JavaScript and you, you learned Map and Reduce. And you can use some example of code that you wrote in the past that was really big and confusing and that you manage to reduce using um, those methods. The second thing I want to talk about is about never burning bridges with a client. Now, this client that paid me 600 euros in the past came back later, a couple months later, and he had another client that wanted to get a mobile app. But at this point, I had much more experience. I could get the app done way faster and I was able to charge more. So I charged way more. I don't remember how, but I charged way more and he gladly accepted. I had already given him uh, a functional project. This time I had more experience, I had something to show, and it went as smoothly as it could. Later down the road, um, I kept applying for jobs, and I won't say the success rate was really high, but I always managed to get a job. And sometimes you have to hustle, you have to send 50, 60 emails a day. Okay, that might be a bit too high, but let's say 20 to 30. Um, the competition is really high as well. But um, I kept sending them. I usually customize them a bit. I don't send the same thing to everyone because that's kind of spammy. But um, I usually take a look at the company and say, hey, I know that you guys do this and this and this. And I think it could be a great fit because of this and that and that. And um, you usually get a few responses. Uh, some people will be genuinely interested in you. Always mention to forget what to... to Always mention what you have, even if it's something that you think is dumb. Uh, always mention your site projects, uh, the projects you worked on in the past, uh, your blog. If you have a YouTube, a YouTube. You have it. If you have a Twitter where you share tips, put it there as well because all of that counts on your email. When the recruiter sees your email, he says, "Oh, this guy. He actually does stuff. He has a blog, so he dedicates." Some of his free time to blog about something. Um, he has a YouTube channel, so he shares what he learns, and that counts a lot. And if you put it, you put your past projects in there, he he doesn't have to ask you for past projects. He can just see all of that, including your GitHub as well. is really useful, especially if you have projects there. I think GitHub is a great place to have those those little projects. Um, people can see your code, they don't have to wait for an interview, they can go and see a little bit of how your code looks, and plus you get to interact with the few people. It's really great to contribute on open source, I know it's a little bit hard when you're beginning and I plan to do another video on it, but um, yeah, using GitHub is great. And going back to what I mentioned about not burning bridges, what you have to keep in mind is Let's say you worked with client one and then you work with client two. Let's call them A and B. Your work's done, but in the future, um, client C might ask client A for uh, a referral or something and client A is going to say, hey, um, check if Mateus is available. Uh, he worked with me in the past, he's great, you should talk to him. And that's how your contact network begins to expand. So if you if you've worked in a company, let's say you had three or four teammates, um, your contact network has already expanded a lot and that's it's great to maintain good relations with them. Um, if one of your teammates is working on another company in the future and the company needs a new developer, he can refer you to them, um, your best clients as well. So your client network kind of expands in a geometric way. Um, not a linear way. So those two clients can refer you to two, three, four new clients. And those new clients can refer you to more and more and more and more. 
and that's how I get jobs these days. I usually don't apply for them. Um, I'm not saying this is wrong or anything, but people usually come to me and say, hey, um, John Doe said that you worked with him in the past and that you're great. Um, do you have some free time? And sometimes I don't. And I say, hey, I don't. But I always refer to someone. I say, hey, I do not have time right now. But um, Jane has time. I, uh, she's, she's not working on anything or she's working part time. And she's great. You can talk to her. And that's great. If you maintain good relations, you are always referring clients to someone and people are, are always referring clients to you. So maintaining good relations is, um, is very important. It's one of the most important things. And that's basically it. So going back to getting, to getting your first job, build a portfolio. It doesn't have to be complex. You just have to have something to show. You need something to show to your potential clients. Um, if possible, write a blog. A blogging is great to learn things. Um, when I wanted to learn something and I just didn't have much motivation or anything, I would learn it and blog about it. That way I was able to go in depth on the subject because I had to blog about it. Um, get a GitHub. That's really important. It's really easier. It's way easier for people to see your code through your GitHub instead of scheduling an interview, stuff like that. That's just way too complex. And also, uh, find jobs that you like, search for technologies that you like, and send emails. Don't be afraid to, to send emails. And when you see the requirements on a job, don't be intimidated by it. If they say that you need to know 30 technologies, okay, that's a little bit over the edge. Let's say you have to, to know eight technologies and you only know five, try applying anyway. In many of the cases, the person who wrote the job post is in a jar or something and they don't really know what they're asking. Or even when not, sometimes you just don't know a technology and that's fine. You, you can exceed on others and you'll still be a great hire for them. So basically have a portfolio, have a GitHub, if possible blog and hustle. So send a lot of applications. If you don't feel you're qualified to the job, you are probably with imposter syndrome. Um, we have that all the time. You think we think we are not good enough for this. I mean, I'm recording this right now and I'm, I will probably watch this later and say, Hey dude, this is terrible. And it might be terrible, but, um, it's actually something. And I'll get better at it. But especially on web development, we tend to think that we are worse than we actually are. So just apply for the job. The worst thing that can happen is you not getting a job. And I would say that if you have friends, try asking them for a lead. Say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you have anything? Do you know anyone that's needing a dev? Anything like that? That's completely fine. Most people. Um, I used to think that uh, if I asked someone for a lead or something, they would find it a bit offensive or something, but it's totally not. I'm completely fine when people ask me for a lead. And um, I'm also completely fine asking. Um, you, I mean, if I don't have anything at the moment, I don't mind going to anyone and say, hey, um, do you have a job available? Anything that I can work on? To people I know, of course. And you can do this to people you don't know, of course, as well. You can post it on Twitter, tag some people. Um, more often than not, they will help you. They will retweet your tweet. They will maybe provide you with a lead, uh, mention you as someone that is needing a, a developer, anything like that. And yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, blog, side projects, well, just for your portfolio, um, hustling, and don't be afraid to apply for jobs, even if you do not qualify for them. That's it. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe. I think the button's here and that you like this video, the button should be here. See you soon. Bye bye.